What is up, my friends? It is myself and Mr. Paddy Murphy here with a match reaction after Liverpool were <laughs> destroyed 3-0 by Wolverhampton Wanderers. Paddy, Wolves are in the relegation zone when we kicked off, mate. We'd beaten them in our last 11 games in the Premier League mm. and then within five minutes, Matip knocking one into his own net and we're 1-0 down. What is your, what's your initial feelings, buddy? <sighs> Numbness is a good word. Um it's it's kind of as bad as it's been not only in the clock era but it's as bad as it's been ever in my tenure anyway as a fan uh it's it's it, like we are as close to top 4 as we are to the bottom 3 so don't don't uh, understate how dread how bad this is but yeah they're a side that have been struggling to score at home and in general and we made them look like prime barcelona it's just embarrassing do you know what? I was looking today. I was looking at the traveling cop again. I was looking at those people. And I was thinking they worked all week, you know, in their jobs, saved up their money, bought their tickets to travel down, bought their tickets to the game, gave their time up to support the team. And that's what they get repaid with. I mean, I have to say, my heart went out to them today. Yeah, 100%. Um, we're paid with nothing. Not any, nothing. Like, you're, you, you, we, we know we've been in bad form, but you expect to be able to go to away to Wolves and, and, and get a result. Um, I do feel sorry for those, um, you know, the away, the away cup, the travelling cup, spending a hard on cash in out in the cold. And yeah, it's 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 depressing times. Um, I hope a lot of them probably, I hope a lot of them have come over to the FSG outside after that, because I know there's still obviously a massive resistance. But I, I think after that result today, we're going to have a lot more people in the FSG out camp. I don't know, Paddy, how, how a top red can exist and look at that performance and not be ashamed of it. It, it was pathetic. I mean, look, I, I had people in my chat trying to defend Mohamed Salah and trying to talk about these 24 goals and assists. But the truth of the matter is, Paddy, seven goals in the Premier League in 20 games. He had four attempts on goal today. He skied and leaned back on three of them, pulled another one wide and look disinterested and like he didn't want to be there. I mean, I, I can't defend him anymore, mate. He's fallen off a cliff. No, he's he's been embarrassing uh, and has been for a year. Um, really, really poor. Offers absolutely nothing, like literally nothing. Um, he, he people will point to his stats, and that that's when you know they've lost the actual the actual battle, the debate. Um, he's been poor, really shocking. Like today, his finishing was off. But I, if I, I just ask, like, what does he actually bring to the side right now? Uh, and the fact that he's allowed play week in, week out, put in these stinkers and still start, um, it first of all shows you how 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 slight and light the squad is. Um, but it's just how how will that work if you if you're not going to be punished for bad performances? What pushes you to make better ones? I know, and I said the same. How he wasn't dragged off, at least towards the end of the game, if you don't want to pull him off at halftime, fair enough. When you're making those changes at the end of the game, and by the way, the state of those changes, and when he's making them at the end of the game, what does he have to do to get dragged off at this point? Now, look, it isn't just Mo. We've got to point that out. It isn't just no. Mo. But Paddy, he's the tallies, man. He's the 350 grand a week, man. He's the person that we... we got behind and broke our wage structure for. And he's not repaying it. I don't care what anybody says. He isn't. It isn't just Mo at all. Uh, however, I would say Mo has been out of form the longest out of some of these players. Um, so people don't... It's not revisionism about Mohamed Salah. I've been saying it for so long about his form. But he's been handed a brand new bumper contract. We've smashed the wage structure. It was a massive debate. And now it's now looking like a massive mistake. Um, giving them that the only the only positive about giving them a new contract is it protects his value. And now I don't want to sell Mohamed Salah, but um, I would be worried about him uh, with FSG because they might want to sell him to put money towards any prospective midfield signings in the summer, which is embarrassing to be honest that we have to do that. Speaking about midfielders today, and I very rarely found myself doing this, but today I was screaming at Thiago, particularly for their third goal. Bajic just lost the ball. That'll happen. He was dispossessed. He learned from it. But the ball was played through to Adama. Adama burst down the right-hand side. And then Thiago jogs, Paddy, jogs back, mm. looks over his shoulder, sees Ruben Neves, kind of half-paces the jog up a little bit, but lets Neves ghost into the penalty area and score the third goal. That's pathetic from a senior pro like that. Yeah, I would say that's probably his worst performance in Liverpool's shirt. Um, uncharacteristically awful, uh, very poor, didn't really show anything today. I do feel sorry for him, though, because he is usually Mr. Reliable, but today he was abysmal. And as you said, particularly for that third goal, you know, there's no, there's just no passion, there's no fight. This team is just, they're, they're devoid of 
of everything. And I, I do think it, it stems purely from last season. It's the hangover from last season. I just think a lot of them players are, are mentally exhausted and physically exhausted. So on that, the Thiago thing, I, I do get what you're saying. He is normally a bit more reliable. What really hurt me there was he had the chance to stop Bajicic feeling responsible for a goal. He had the chance to track his runner and bail out his young teammate, his young international like fellow Spanish yeah. teammate, and he didn't mm-hmm. do it. And that that worried me. But we get to Andy Robertson, Liverpool captain today again, Paddy, and that wasn't the captain's performance, and neither was Trent on the other side. Look, the whole back four were just appallingly bad. Oh, yeah, the the whole back four were awful, especially Joe Gomez, I'd say. Um, yeah, Robbo is probably, the in terms of effort, one of the only ones that have... He's maintained efforts, with the quality not so much, but at least the effort, which is... It shows kind of how bad things are that we're ranking efforts of players now, which is really, really appalling. But yeah, Robbo wasn't great today. None of the back line were. To concede three at the Molyneux away to Wolves is just, it's despicable. It really is shocking. Um, Darwin, it's getting harder to defend the the one-on-one misses because, you know, he spoke during the week saying that Klopp had spoke with him, told him to be a bit calmer in the final third. Now, look, of the front three, I thought he was the better of the three lads today. You know, at least he's making the runs in behind, but he's got to score that one, Paddy. Definitely the better of the three. uh, But again, you just wonder when they're going to start popping in. We keep saying just wait till they pop in. But that, like... Strikers, the best strikers should be able to just take one chance after having none, and he should be scoring there today. Um, it is really frustrating because you never know that goes in. It could be a different. Like we started that second half very strongly, which we looked to like pr- prime Liverpool for a solid at least five ten minutes, but obviously didn't actually get the goal. But he was the better of the front three. Isn't saying much, but yeah, you just wish that fell in. And I don't know, I don't know what's going to give or when it's going to happen. I want to speak about the penalty incident and I want to speak about Jurgen Klopp in a minute. But beforehand, I just want to buy and hope to buy Cody Gakpo some time because he has come in, mate, at a really difficult period where we're devoid of confidence and a lot has been asked of him to learn a new system. I hope people give him a bit of breathing space. Listen, Kylian Mbappe would come into this Liverpool side and struggle. You know what I mean? Like any, anyone would struggle in this current side. It's just, it's misfiring completely. We're, we're playing abysm, abysmally. Abysmally, is that the right word? I don't I, Who cares, to be honest? A bigger fish to fry. Uh, listen, Gakpo wasn't great today. He was a lot more involved, which I liked, and I like to see him off the left, but it just didn't fall for him. Um, but again, I, I do back him. I do think he has that the skill set. And, you know, you can't really single him out when everyone else is awful. Um but at least he was. It was good to see him involved and getting into positions. I, I mean, I was trying to make a, a case during the week about six games coming up, sixteen points needed from eighteen. I was willing to take a draw away at Newcastle, and we first game we, we we've just absolutely just capitulated again. But I want to talk about the the penalty show. What what did you think of that one? The the handball. Yeah, the one, the one where I mean, his arm was down by his side, but I do feel like he put yeah. his arm across to it. Yeah, I, I think it. Well, listen, I might be biased, but I did think it was handball. I, I, the commentator said that he, he left it in a natural position, but he did do a bit of a swivel. So, yeah, I think it should have been a handball. I think if it was against us, it definitely would have been given. Uh, it is very frustrating, but I don't know if it was if the shoe was on the other foot and it was against us at Anfield. I suppose we probably would have said it would have been harsh. But I do think it would, it would if it was given, I wouldn't have been shocked. Yeah, I'm look, I'm clutching at clutching at straws here a little bit. I will, I will, I'm looking for any kind of glimmer of hope I can get. So look, to finish up, Paddy, we need to have a conversation about the manager. Um, and I don't know what way to structure this conversation. So I'm gonna look at it from a few angles. Do you think there's any chance he walks? Yeah, I do think there's a chance, absolutely. It's a bit like what happened with, with Dortmund in the seventh season. He didn't think he could turn it around. Uh, I do think it definitely kind of hinges on what's going on in the background, whether there is owner changes. I think that is the re. If he doesn't see that actually happening, and if he thinks he has to go into next season with FSG, I think he'll walk. If he sees the light at the end of the tunnel being the billions, I think then he stays. But again, it's all down to that. And we don't really know that at the moment. We're in limbo. I agree with exactly what you said. I think he looks at the landscape and waits to see if FSG are gone. Because if they're there, he knows, like we know, he's not going to get the support he needs. He's not going to get the finances he needs. Um, 
So I agree with you wholeheartedly on that one. Uh, next question, I guess, around the manager, Paddy, is how much responsibility does Jurgen have to take for these performances? Listen, he's the manager of the football club. I do think he has to take a large responsibility for it um, to, a, to a degree. But I'd, so I'd then, then it gets to the point where what he can only do so much. People say, oh, he needs to change it up. But realistically, who, who, like, we don't really have an abundance of quality at the moment. I do think his decision making, his subs in particular, time and time again, really be like our beggar's belief. Like, you're bringing on Jordan Henderson when you're 2 0 down. I don't know what that's meant to do. You know, I thought Naby Keita, even though his final ball wasn't great, I thought he was still put in a solid enough shift. Yeah, just, I, he takes responsibility, but I don't think. You know, Johan Cruyff in his prime could could turn this around. I don't think anyone in the world can get a better shift out of these players. I just don't think he helps himself sometimes. He's stuck with his 4-3-3 again since the World Cup, which hasn't worked and hasn't worked for the longest time. But also when he tells when he says things in his press conferences like Mohamed Salah isn't lacking in confidence. I mean, come on. Like uh, how are we supposed <laughs> to believe that? It is a difficult one because I suppose he has to say certain things sometimes. He can't just come out and bash Salah because then that will knock the confidence. He, I'd love him to come out and talk shit about FSG, but he can't because they're his employer. So at times, I agree. He, he definitely comes out with some mad shit. And I I, I, I hope he... I, I don't think... I haven't seen his match reaction today. I hope he hasn't come out with excuses. Um, But I think sometimes you have to be... You have to just play the media sometimes. And I, he, he can't come out and say negative things about his players. He's never really done that, and I don't expect him to, although he should. I mean, he should speak with actions by dropping them. That's what he should yeah. do. I mean, again, today, Paddy, we've seen the changes at the end where Milner comes on, Simicus comes on, Oxley Chamberlain comes on, but it was more the absence of somebody else coming on that spoke volumes for me today. And again, Fabio Carvalho gets ghosted by the manager. Don't understand it myself, um, especially in an attacking sense. I think he can come on and give you that little bit of explosiveness, find that killer ball. Um, I feel sorry for him. We've plucked him from Fulham, and he probably he would have been better off staying at Fulham. They're higher than us in the table, you know what I mean? It's which is which is crazy to think, but I do feel for him. I I don't know when you see things like this happening so consistently, you have to wonder what's going on behind the scenes. But I just think there is a large disconnect behind the scenes right now. I think there is a for the for the well, it's been there this season, but. Behind the scenes, there's a problem. And, you know, there's reports that come out this week of certain players and staff of the club not feeling they're able to do their job properly, Julian Ward, etc. There's there's, there's things going on, and FSG are, have created a very toxic environment. Folks, we're going to have to leave it there because we like to try and keep these 13, 14 minutes or so. But I want to say a massive thank you to Paddy because it's not easy to come on here after watching that uh, week after week. I want to say thank you to our sponsor, Circle. I want to say thank you to you guys for watching. Look forward to your comments in the comment section. Some of you. I know some of you are going to be in for the bands, but it is what it is. Look, thank you to Paddy. Thank you to Connor. Thank you to you guys. And we will talk to you soon. Much love. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.